You're saying God is involved with the United States. Give me some evidence. What's in our history that kind of gives you that idea that it's that there's even been a that God has even been in, in the inception of this country? Yeah, and there's so much proof, and they just got to go back and read original documentation. I'll give you one great example. Benjamin Franklin is, as always, known. this is something David Barton talks about a good bit. Benjamin Franklin's known as the least religious of the founding fathers. Nobody disputes that. Of course, there's no, that's all relative, right? Most, you, you could be the least religious in your church, and you're only a 99% Christian or 96%. Benjamin Franklin gave a speech at the 1787, June 28, 1787, where he, he just, off the cuff, and he had poured his life into this thing called America. He was biblically not—he was not biblically illiterate. He was literate. He knew his Bible, and he gave a 14 sentence speech. He said things like, "We've been assured, sir, in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. If a sparrow cannot fall out his notice, how can an empire rise without his aid?" He goes on and on and on, off the cuff for 14 sentences. James Madison, who took notes on the Constitutional Convention. He wrote down these words of Benjamin Franklin, and Franklin didn't do this from a handwritten note. He spoke from the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, Jesus told us. In those 14 sentences, y'all, there were 14 scriptural references. Now, today, people, especially maybe a university professor, they're so biblically illiterate, they don't even know those are Bible references. But Ben Franklin knew that everybody in the room was so well-versed and so well-informed about the Bible that he didn't have to say, this comes from this scripture, that comes from that scripture. I would challenge anybody, do the Google. Look at Benjamin Franklin's speech on June 28, 1787 at the Constitutional Convention. And you know what he did? He called. They were fighting, right? The Virginia plan, the New Jersey plan. They were fighting about who was going to get what done. And he said, "We're gonna let's pray. Let's call on the Father of lights to bless our endeavors. And we've called on him throughout the, our history. Let's call him now. They had three days of prayer and fasting, and that's where— they hammered out the discussion that became the Constitution of the United States. Nobody can read the Declaration and not see the four, four references to God. Nobody can read the Constitution and not see the references to God. Nobody can read the Founders' words and not see the references to God unless they've been removed. Look mm -hmm. at George Washington's farewell address when he, he, he made it clear that we, we cannot have, you can't call yourself a patriot if you subvert the very meaning of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And people miss all that. When Washington was going to be, they wanted to make him a king. And he quoted Jeremiah 17, 9. He said, the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. Only God can judge. We, we were just come from a kingdom. We don't want to be a, a king. If I were a perfect man, and I'm not, who would, would the next man be a perfect man or the next or the next? He quoted scripture to deny them making him a king, and he was elected unanimously as the president of the United States, the first president. You can go on and on, and I can tell you scripture after scripture. 